a cante flamenco is not a song. Why? Hi, this is Guillermo Guillen for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you dance flamenco, you sing flamenco, or you play flamenco guitar, cajon, palmas, or you just love flamenco and you want to understand how it works, today I'll give you 12 good reasons why we shouldn't use the term song in flamenco and rather keep the original word cante. I don't want to play with words here, but rather to see what they tell us exactly these two different words. Sometimes when we try to translate something, we just lose part of the reality expressed by a specific word. First, the composition. A song is attributed to an author and a composer and a songwriter. It can be just one person or different person working on the same song, but usually we know their names. In flamenco, the singer, the cantaor, just sings an assortment of different pieces, different letras, different coletillas from different people, different styles, and many times we don't even know where the lyrics come from. We don't know who wrote the letras. The form. We have different possibilities, different forms for a song, but the most common, the typical form for a song is the alternation, verse and chorus and verse and chorus and sometimes a bridge, but basically it's the common form for a song. In a cante, we don't have this concept of verse, chorus, verse, chorus, okay? We have a sequence, a combination of different elements, uh, letras, coletillas, falsetas, with no pre-established order. The storytelling. One song tells us one story, okay? One song, one story. In a cante, it's different. In a cante, we have different letras. There is a video about what is a letra exactly. In a cante, one letra is one story, okay? The different stories in the different letras are not related. It may sound weird, but it's how it is. Four, the lyrics. The lyrics of a song are written for that specific song, okay? We won't find the same lyrics in two different songs. In a cante, yes, we can do that. We'll find the same lyrics in different cantes. Five, the melody. In a song, usually all the verses have the same melody. But in a cante, we have different letras with different melodies because they are different styles, okay? And basically, a style is a melody. Different styles, different melodies. The reason. Usually in a song, the verse, the chorus, every part covers a specific number of compasses, right? But in a cante flamenco, we can make a line longer. So it will make the uh, verse longer, it will make the cante longer, and the, the musicians and the dancers, they need to adapt. And this is one of the bases of the flamenco communication, interaction, improvisation. The length of a song is set, it's pre-established. It means we have a beginning, an unfolding and the end. And uh, we have different verses that cover the whole story and once the story is over, the song is over. But in a cante flamenco, since we don't have a whole story, we don't need this progression with the beginning, unfolding and end. We don't care. It's, it's up to the singer at that moment, okay? If he's very inspired, he can just add more and more letras and he just is adding more and more stories, short stories. The structure of a song usually is respected. Every time you'll sing this song, you respect the structure. You don't want to mix up a uh, story, right? The part of the story. And you don't want to skip part of the story. So you respect the structure. In a cante, since there is no a global storytelling, we can just 
organize the elements as we want okay if i have four letters it's not like letter one two three four i can just mix them up and when the guitarist plays falsetta it's like a dialogue okay it needs to be natural there is no specific place for the falsetta that needs to be specifically here it's just when we feel we need a falsetta and sometimes we don't need a falsetta <laughs> The musical part or the instrumental interlude, I don't know how to call this, but like the introduction of a song and the different instrumental part we have in a song, they are specifically composed for this specific song. And we can even recognize a song just with a guitar riff, for example. In a cante flamenco, these instrumental parts usually played with the guitar, we call these falsettas. And uh, we have different falsettas in a cante. It's not like a song that we hear always the same guitar riff. In a cante, we'll have different falsettas every time. And these falsettas are independent and they have characteristics dictated by the palo in general, not by this cante in particular, okay? If I have uh, falsettas por alegría, I can use them, the same falsettas, in any cante por alegría. <laughs> La salida. A song usually starts with the first verse or sometimes with the chorus, but a cante flamenco many times starts with what we call la salida del cante. It's kind of a warm up for the voice, and many palos have their traditional own salida del cante. Like I'm sure you know the tiriti tran 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 de la alegría, right? The chorus or the estribillo. In a song, the concept of estribillo is just that it comes back regularly, systematically, many times during the song. It's like the, the climax of the song. And we recognize a song many times by its chorus. In flamenco, we call the chorus the estribillo. And it's a very different concept because they are not meant to be repeated throughout the cante. Sometimes we can find an estribillo only once, or only at the beginning, or only at the end, or we can, within one cante, we can find different estribillos. Coletillas. I think there is no such concept uh, in the song universe. Coletillas, I think it's only in flamenco. Coletillas or juguetillos in flamenco are kind of short secondary letras that come to stick at the end of the main letra. And they are not an obligation, okay? It depends on the palo. There are many palos with uh, many coletillas like bureria and alegria, and then you have other palos with no coletilla. So I think it's clear for you now, right, that we are in two different uh, worlds, the songs and the cantes. And when we talk about cante, that's why we use this small word por. Uh, there is a video on this topic. Por, when we say we sing por bureria, we sing por malagueña, we sing por solea, it means that the possibilities are open. We can do whatever we want. I mean, within the framework of the rules of the cante, but we can do whatever we want with our Lego box. In a cante, we can find a salida del cante and then a letra, and after the letra, we have a coletilla, and after the coletilla, maybe a falseta, and then another letra, and after the letra, an estribillo, and so on, and we just built a cante like this. And this is what I call the modularity of forms in flamenco. Here I'm just explaining global uh, concepts and considerations about the cante versus a song, but you'll find everything. You'll find flamenco songs, like flamenco compositions with a global story, with a structure, with a duration, with everything. But they are compositions, they are songs, not cantes, technically. And then you'll find canciones aflamencadas, it's like 
a song from any other kind of music and just put on a flamenco compass like por bureria with a flamenco sound and flamenco instruments and flamenco kind of uh, singing but these are not cantes again they are songs canciones aflamencadas uh, like flamencaized songs I hope it could help. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. If you have any question, any comments, put them in the comment section. If you want me to talk about something specific in this video, just let me know. I'm here for you. And you can also go and check flamencomaps.com and you'll see all the classes and courses I offer there. And that's it for today. Vamos lá.